Alright, yo, what's going on, everybody? It's time for our next biggest Smittycraft update. Big changes coming today. Thank you, everyone, who's been playing the server so far, but let's get into these new changes. Okay, so a quick overview of the things that we're going to be covering in this video alone. A couple of things we added are, number one, I got timestamps and all that stuff in the description, so just go to that if you need it. But the first thing we're going to be going over is how PvP has changed in the survival world. A couple new commands, then we're going to move on to the new clan system that we added with clan wars and clan quests. Pretty awesome. Then we're going to move on to the couple hundred new enchant enchantments that you can get in the game. It's pretty sick. And then lastly, we just have a little note on the skills, challenges, and stuff. So let's get right into this. So when it comes to PvP in the survival world, we actually have a new command that lets you toggle your PvP on and off. All you have to do is simply enter PvP on if you want to be able to fight people, and PvP off if you don't want to fight. Now the rule is the other person has to also have PvP on if you're going to be able to fight them. But yeah, in the survival world you can now fight, you're not safe on your land if you have PvP on. They can kill you wherever, so just take note of that. And as you can see right here, as an example, I just chucked my PvP off and I can't hit him and he can't hit me. So let's say you end up getting into a battle and you actually get killed. Now we have this really cool new command that actually lets you teleport back to where you last died. All you have to do is simply enter slash back, just like that, and it'll take you back to the last place you were before you died, and you'll be uh, invincible from PvP for about 20 seconds here. So you can go back, pick up your items if you lost the PvP battle, pick them up, and then you can just warp away if you want to not get killed again by that player. But basically you have 20 seconds of protection past that PvP date, so just do slash back to go back to where you died anytime. This works whenever. So that is the latest on PvP in the survival world. And again, if you guys have any questions about anything in this video, just DM me on Discord. I can definitely help you out and tell you how things work. And let's move on to clans. So clans is this really cool new feature that lets you get members on your team. It lets you make a banner, lets you fight in clan wars, do quests, earn a little bit of money on the side, and level up your clan pretty much. It's really cool, and here's how you create a clan. So this is a feature that is open to absolutely everyone. All you need to do is be able to type in commands and have $10,000. So what you want to do is type in slash clan create, and then you have three letters. It can be three letters long at the max, or two at the minimum. So two to three letters, pick your own clan. As you see, I have the NSC right here. You hit enter, and that'll take $10,000 away from you, and it will create the clan. Now this new addition has this really cool GUI. All you have to do is type in slash clan just like this, and that'll bring up this nice menu right here. And this is basically the overview of your entire clan. You can look at all these stats right here at the top. It'll say your founder, it'll have your KDR, your kill death ratio, your war stats, the status of your clan, your banner, all that cool stuff just in one nice spot right here. Now one of the first things you're probably going to want to do after making your clan is create a banner for it. So right here in the middle you can see clan banner. Like the leader or a moderator can click on that and then it will actually let you upload a banner to it. So make sure you make a banner, have it in your inventory, and then all you have to do is simply drag it into the circle right there. Hit save and just like that that will be your clan banner that's what you'll be known as that's what people will see when they challenge you to wars and stuff and it's pretty sick so you hit back a couple times then you eventually get back to this menu and you can see it's now your banner in the middle of the screen right there another cool thing here from this menu is you can actually see all the overview of every clan right here it'll show all the banners and stuff of every clan created in the server and from within that menu you can actually sort the clans like the best kill death the best war wins like the most deaths all that stuff right here on the top if you want to sort the clans top to bottom just just to see who's the best and who's the worst pretty much it's, it's pretty cool another cool addition with clans right here is actually the ability to do quests. So right here you click on the pig head right there whatever and it'll take you to all these quests you can do to earn points to level up your clan. All you have to do is simply hover over them and it'll give you kind of the information about it. Diamond breaker, 50 points, break diamond blocks, pretty easy. And if you complete that task it will actually give you 50 points towards your clan. And yeah it's pretty sick. That'll help you level up your clan to get more rewards and it's just something to do on a little bit of side quest action there. So that, that's a nice little feature. Moving towards the center here you can click on just your members list. It'll show all the faces of all the members just to make sure you can see who's in your clan when they join and stuff. Pretty cool. And if you want to invite players you do it from right here. Click the paper and then enter their name and that's how you invite people to your clan. Or you can just do the command slash clan invite and then the player name pretty much. But <laughs> right here you can actually add rivalries to your clan. So if there's another clan out there that you just hate, you can add them as a rival and you can mutually just hate each other and you, they'll show up there pretty much. So just click that paper right there and add a clan to hate them. And uh, there's also allies too. You can add allies from this menu right here. Click the list to also add them. With your allies there is the ability to uh, share home warps, there's the ability to share chests, and there's also the ability to share chats with your allies. So you want to make sure that you very much trust the allies that you you, that you form bonds with. So now moving on to the clan war sword. This is a pretty cool addition right here. This allows clans to basically battle each other for points and money and, and pride pretty much. But as you can see, you click the sword, it'll show all the clan banners and each want to pick a clan that you want to battle just like that. Then it'll take you to this. You want to pick how many players you want to be in the battle. So it goes up to literally 64, which is just an entire clan. But for now, I'll just pick 1v1. Then you, what you have to do is pick an arena. There'll be more arenas coming. That'll be more all this stuff coming. But for now, we just have one arena oak for So you got to pick that. Then it'll take you to the screen right here where you have to pick the kit that you want to use. A kit is basically the items that everyone's going to get, the weapons and stuff, just to make it a fair balance match. Everyone will get the same kit, so yes, you want to pick a kit, and then they'll take you to all the kit selections. Again, there'll be more of these coming, but for now, you can just pick whichever one you want. For this demonstration, we'll pick the iron. It says description, basic iron tools with a bow, so we'll click that one. Now, you'll probably notice after you get to this point, you'll get an error right here that says you have uh, stuff in your inventory. So what you want to do to basically fix this is you could either clear out your inventory, start it, or you could use our new warp, slash warp CW, and that will take you to the Clan Wars Arena, and it'll automatically get rid of everything you're 
your you know, in your inventory, but you'll you'll obviously be able to get it back later. But it will just take you to this spot right here where your inventory, you know, I'm nothing, you have a fresh slate, and all you gotta do is simply restart the clan, do slash clan, go to clan wars, and just redo everything. And yeah, you're probably gonna want to start most clan wars from here because you'll have automatically nothing in your inventory, which is nice because you can't have anything to start clan wars. So once you send out a clan war invite, players of the clan that you're challenging will get this little uh, notification on the screen in here. On Java, you can click accept on the screen right there. Or on Bedrock, you have to type in the command slash clan war accept and then NSC, which is the clan that they're battling. You have to accept the uh, invite just like that and then you will be teleported into the war and war will begin shortly. So once you enter the war, all players will be teleported down to the same spot right here. There'll be two different spawns. You'll get the kit that, that the person picked. So we went with iron tools, so we have that kit. There'll be a short grace period, but after that, it's basically just PvP all out. If you die, you're done, and then the last person for the last team standing wins, and that's about it. The winner gets a little bit of money, levels up my clan in here, as you can see after winning, and some points, and it's just really nice. That'll keep stats, obviously. The stats are going to be displayed for everyone to see, so you want to win wars, for sure. But yeah, other than clan wars, you can also set a home for your team. So what you want to do is go into the home menu right here, and once you click on that, you'll notice there's a name tag right there that basically says set new home area. So what happens when you click that is that it'll automatically create an area that all your teammates can warp to, so you go to where you want to be, like the middle of your base, you do slash clan, then you go to the home menu, click that, and then you have to name the home something, so I just named it Grass right here for the example. After you do that, it'll be a created home. You can have up to two homes to start out with, uh, with your clan, like level two. And uh, yeah, all your teammates can basically go into the home menu and just click on, on the home and they'll be warped there, teleported there, and it works perfectly just to get everyone gathered up quickly, and it, it's nice. It's nice to have that for the team. Another thing every clan will have is prefixes in the chat that shows your clan numbers, your acronyms, pretty much. And if you want to change the color of this, what you want to do, or the name of this even, the title of it, as you can see, I have the neat prefix. What you want to do is type in slash clan mod tag just like this. Now, it's kind of difficult to explain, but in the description, if you want to pick the color, you actually have to put the color uh, no letter value that corresponds to that. So in the description, I have Minecraft server tools. Go in there and uh, click the color. It'll tell you the, the combination. So I click green. It's and A. So I know green is and A. So what I have to do is go into the chat, type and A NSC, and that'll change our uh, our prefix to uh, green as opposed to yellow as it was. Uh, just go into that website. It's kind of hard to explain, but you'll figure it out. If you need any help, DM me on Discord to change the color of your name. And there you go. We're now the green NSC. Another thing every clan has is actually a clan bank where people can deposit money, take out money pretty much, and it shows the clan balance right here. What you want to do is you can either add money or withdraw. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to add money on the left here. And then from here, you pretty much just click how much money you want to put into the bank right now. So as you can see on the left, I'm clicking a thousand, that adds it up, and then down here it says add two thousand. I click, I take away a thousand, I can add a thousand. So basically the green just adds a thousand, the red takes away a thousand, and then the emerald block down there confirms that you put the money into the into the clan pretty much. So right here, we'll put two thousand dollars into our clan. Success, it says, and just like that, our clan now is two thousand dollars. Every clan can also have a shared chest that all all members can access. If you put items in here, nobody else from any other clan will be able to join. Only the members in your clan. So you click on the chest right there icon and they'll take you to this place right here. And any item, anybody can access this in your clan. They put something in here, it's stuck in there just for people in the clan to take. Nobody else can get in here. And you can actually organize the items right here or you can buy extra chest slots. As you can see, chest is $25,000. Of course, the clan has to have that $25,000. So you have, to, you have to pay the clan that much money to buy it. But yeah, there you go. You can buy extra chests and you can just have a whole bunch of space in here just for your own clan mates. And it's pretty cool. And then for the last thing in this GUI down here in the bottom right, you just have your clan settings in here you can basically set if you want to do wars, if you want to have it notify you when your clan members leave and stuff, if you want to share chat with your allies, that's a pretty big one. If you want PvP on for your for your own clan, that's a pretty big one also. So if your teammates can't hit each other and you want them to be able to kill each other, turn it on in here. This is the area. And yeah, just a lot of settings in here. Feel free to go look through here to, to click on the paper and stuff to toggle them. Only the only the leader or the admin on the clan can do it. But feel free to go look through these settings. Make sure you have them to your liking. So another huge change here that we have is that we've actually added a couple hundred custom enchantments to the server. So you'll notice that when you enchant something now, you might get a enchantment that might not look very familiar. So you can see right here, I enchant this sword and I get confused and I get force field. Now you've probably never heard of those before and neither have I. So what you want to do to look up information on these is type in slash AE info and then enter the uh, enter the enchantment name right there. So AE info confuse and it'll basically tell you the description, what it applies to in the max level of that enchantment. I also look up AE force field here to see what that enchantment does and it says basically this applies to swords and it gives you a chance to push away your opponents. That's a pretty cool enchantment but that's what I got on my sword. New enchantments, pretty sweet. But there's another tool here that actually lets you get these enchantments. So what you want to do is type in slash enchant or just like this. Then it'll give you this menu right here. And what you want to do from this menu, you'll notice that you have all these different, basically, levels of enchantments. So you have the simples, the ultimates, the legendaries, the elites, just all this crazy levels, and they're pretty expensive. As you see, each one, this one costs $400 for a simple enchantment. Or I guess not dollars, but actually XP. Each one of these costs XP. So the bottom level simple is level 17 in the experience. It takes it out of your experience bar. You need to be level 17 to go for an enchantment here. 
The next level is level 23, level 37, level 48, level 91, and the final like mythical enchantments is level 111 you have to be to buy a book. Now to see the possible enchantments that you can get, all you want to do is simply right click over like the level. So simply right there, right click on it and it shows all the possible enchantments that I can get here if I buy them for 17 levels. You don't get to pick a book, it basically gives you a random one and then you have a chance that that book works. So to buy these enchantments using XP right here, I'm going to do legendary. So it costs 25,000 XP which is a lot of levels. All you got to do is go to the green right here, click accept transmission or trans transmission, accept transaction just like this and that will give in your inventory this weird little thing right here and basically what you want to do with this legendary enchantment book is you just want to right click it on the ground a firework goes up and it tells you on the left right there the enchantment book that you actually got so i got swords three strike lightning strikes nearby players that's that's pretty cool i like that enchantment but there is a catch as unfortunately every book has a probability of working as you see this book right here is a three percent chance rate of working and giving me the enchantment and a 97 percent chance of failing so i'm not even guaranteed to get this enchantment but i may as well try so what you want to do to apply this enchantment book is take it in survival hover it over the sword that you want to put it on and then just simply place it down and it will basically tell you right away if you got the enchantment on your sword or if you failed and you didn't get it so right there it told me i didn't get my three percent chance of getting that enchantment i failed and there goes twenty five thousand xp so it's pretty expensive it's pretty risky but in the end it could pay off as these enchantments are literally insane so i'm gonna go ahead and try to buy another a couple more legendary ones right here and as you just right click it gives you the books and there you go we've got weapons drastically increase xp and mob drops like these are some insane enchantments but yeah just keep trying to apply the books on uh, a lot of them have better success rates than 3%, like literally all of them do. And eventually you'll get some cool custom enchantments. You can get up to like 20 enchantments. It's pretty awesome. So yeah, feel free to uh, enjoy these new like hundreds of enchantments that we have added. Another tool from this slash enchanter menu is the tinker right here. This thing's kind of dumb, honestly. Basically what it does is it gives you XP. You can trade in the weapons that you have enchanted for XP. I wouldn't really ever do this as it, bar it barely ever gives you any XP. So you throw your sword in there and then the other side you get an XP bottle. Uh, it's really not much XP. It's not very much worth it. I wouldn't even ever use that, but that's how that works. And then the other tool you have from this enchanter menu is the alchemist right here. And this thing actually is pretty cool. There's basically a whole bunch of new custom items around the map that can naturally spawn. And what this thing do is it can uh, basically match them together to give you better enchantment books to upgrade. If you have two enchantment books of the same level that are custom you put them in here it'll um, do a higher level combine them pretty much kind of like an anvil and they, there's also like magic dust out there you put it in here it'll it'll combine the magic dust just go find a bunch of random items try to put it in here and it's pretty cool what it can do as it basically just helps you uh, get your books faster like for example one of the custom items i have here is this mob track creator it's a slime ball that you can find naturally generated like in chests and stuff and basically what you can do is you can apply that onto a sword and it will keep track of how many mobs you kill with it so it's really cool just a bunch of random things like that you can find cool little additions and now every mob you kill it'll actually keep track on that sword so if you want to go find this slime ball that'd be pretty awesome you also have the soul tracker there's how many players you kill you put that on your sword and it will collect souls from the players it'll keep count and you actually need souls to activate some of the other uh um, enchantments. So it's pretty cool to find these things. Uh, again, you can train them with villagers. You can get them on a chest naturally generated and just feel free to go find them. They're kind of hard, but they're also very hard to explain. But yes, that's that's the new couple hundred enchantments. Hope you all enjoy and just DM me if you have any questions. And then for this last command of the day, I just want to say the slash skill command. Remember guys, slash skill will bring up the skills that you've been working on. The top of your hotbar, basically the thing that keeps track of like your fighting and stuff. You can see how far you're coming. Once you hit level 7, you get a special ability to right click to use it. And just, yeah, just use slash skill to go check out all this stuff. It tells you what you're getting and just slash skill. Make sure you use that command to, to get caught up. I know people are getting confused why they're getting iron after mining cobblestone. It's because when your skills is upgraded that far. So make sure you use that command to just go check out that menu. But yes. But anyways, I want to thank you all so much as always for watching this video and playing the server. Let me know how these uh, additions are going guys if there's any problems just contact me join the discord server obviously join smittycraft uh hopefully you all enjoy this until the next one guys peace out have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you later good night <laughs>